We focus on the Pochini catchment. The catchment, some of you had the chance to visit uh, yesterday, which is located in the upper Tugela. So what did we achieve? Uh, we achieved capacity building, our main target, main goal, uh, a total of uh, 24 students supervised and other activities. I will come back to that. And uh, we achieved as well uh, uh, 24 easy papers since uh, 2010. We see here the progression of, of the papers. 90% of the papers are signed between French and South African scientists. 49 different quarters from 25 <laughs> institutions, mostly in Africa, South Africa. How all of that did happen, I'm going to introduce uh, the global context, uh, some key science and technology advances to come back to science to really show you what we did with all the students, what we happened and how we are intending to meet the goal of uh, global change mitigation and so on. And how did that happen day to day? Some of you went in the field, but I will show you pictures of our, our activities uh, step by step. First of all, very few people in the street know that uh, soil carbon is the biggest pool of carbon on Earth with 1,500 gigatons, billion tons of carbon, which is twice the amount of the atmosphere of uh, 7 150, and you see right from those numbers that any change, any change in the carbon pool will have huge impacts on global change. And uh, you can see here that uh, the exchanges from soils, vegetation to the atmosphere are every year 120 gigatons. And this is a huge number compared to the nine, the tiny nine gigatons from anthropogenic activities. So soils have a very big role to play. And what we've noticed over the, the years since uh, deforestation is that we have, we had, we are having a big impact on global changes by changing the land uses, by changing the land management. And already what is happening is that through processes of soil erosion, for instance, huge part of the soil carbon has been already released to the atmosphere, increasing climate change being a main contributor to climate change. About two thirds of historical carbon stocks have been lost in agricultural land. So this is hampering climate, increasing the worldwide temperature, but not only we have far reaching consequences on food security, the carbon which is the main constituent of organic matter in the soil, is the main source of nutrient, of water, for food production. Carbon, organic matter, is very important for water holding capacity, water resource, quantity, quality. And we have other important aspects like soil biodiversity. 80% of the living biomass on Earth is in soils, the medicines of the future will come from bacteria, from viruses into soils. So soils are very important, not only for climate, but for the overall uh, human living and the living of ecosystems. What about the status of soil degradation worldwide? Here's a map showing that South Africa, along many countries of Africa, has a huge problem of soil degradation. Those soils are being depleted by processes such as uh, water erosion, tillage erosion, wind erosion, water erosion creating huge losses of soils, huge losses of soil carbon. So in this context, we have a main question. It is a question we had back eight years ago together with our partners here, with whom we worked hand in hand, the UKZN partners, uh, Graham, uh, Colin, uh, other partners from other institutions, uh, Sue uh, and uh, Pauline and, and so on. So is land degradation reversible? Will we be able to store back all this lost carbon for climate change mitigation, for poverty alleviation? Huh? Carbon is a source of food, of water in the soil. 
So this was our main question. So let's come back now to the soil, the scientific and technological advances. We build a team with people from different uh, experiences, expertise around soil carbon, around carbon erosion, and around greenhouse gases emissions. And what I'm going to show you are some of the key results we obtained in the cooperation. Key results we obtained that will give uh, to South Africa, to Africa, and to the world uh, under stress, under land degradation, under poverty, uh, needing economic development, some possible responses. So first of all on erosion, we show that land degradation is a main control of runoff of the loss of soil, of the loss of soil carbon. We show that soil carbon losses by sheet erosion amount worldwide, with a paper that is being published now, worldwide 1.6 gigatons of carbon, meaning that 1.6 gigatons of carbon worldwide every year are displaced from their original place thanks to water erosion. So it is about 15% uh, uh, than the total uh, greenhouse emissions by human activities. What we have seen that practices, land practices like no tillage, zero tillage, where we stop cropping the land, we plant without uh, tilling the land, no tillage is able on our sides to decrease soil CO2 emissions by about uh, 50%. So this could be a best management practices to limit CO2 emissions. What do we show is that gullies, which are a main feature of land degradation in South Africa, unlike many countries in the world, gullies do not form by linear erosion. They are not formed by, due to overgrazing, but they are formed by a natural process associated with uh, pathways. And as you can see here, you have pathways, former cattle pathways, and those gullies start at those pathways. And we have several publications showing that. Why I want to stress this point is that we need to make a diagnostic, a very accurate diagnostic on what is happening to find suitable uh, remediation techniques. And this is a perfect case in Africa, Southern Africa. Gabions have been used for years to mitigate against gullies, and it happens not to work. And in this case, we are contributing to giving the reason and giving clues on how to solve the issue. Climate impacts the most, the changes in runoff, nutrient and carbon losses from within river basins from plot level, upstream the basin to the basin outlet. This is a review paper from uh, hundreds of uh, locations in the world, done by Magdet, who will uh, introduce himself later, and showing that uh, when you go downstream, you have a sharper decrease of runoff in this case, of total carbon in this case, under a semi-arid uh, climate compared to uh, uh, an arid or a humid climate. So some of those trends might be used to improve modeling, might be used to improve the way we are going to mitigate against climate change uh, using suitable uh, techniques. Some key results now on uh, greenhouse gases emissions. Uh, we show that uh, no tillage as well uh, from the soil and uh, emission from the sediments, uh, zero tillage uh, decreases significantly uh, the losses. And uh, some publications uh, support that as well. So coming back to our main question, will land rehabilitation allow climate change mitigation through carbon reallocation to the soils to foster sustainable and sustained growth? I mean, more carbon to the soil, restored soil, will produce much more food, much more income to the people, possibility to develop uh, small businesses in the countryside, people to grow their businesses, 
and the main source of labor of uh, jobs for the country. I think we have some evidences that can say yes, uh, but not using textbook techniques and uh, implying that we really do need to do some in-depth research, uh, collect data in the field, have evidences of high quantity data, high quality data to really uh, conclude to, to some uh, points. How did that happen? It happened thanks to team building an international and a multidisciplinary team with students, uh, senior researchers from different uh, institutions in the north, in the south, SIAN, UKZN, ARC, and others, uh, biologists, uh, climatologists, soil scientists, uh, modelers, hydrologists, and others. This team uh, invested a lot in scientific facts in publications. So the evolution from uh, the first paper in 2010, uh, eight year, uh, eight year, two years after uh, we first uh, arrived, and uh, that reached 24 right now. You can see in gray the co-publications with the master students. Some of those masters became PhDs, which explain the recent rise in co-publications with the PhD students. Uh, some of the papers with the co-authors, uh, here's a paper in uh, 2015 this year, uh, we try to explain why we have uh, short-term greater CO2 emissions from uh, no-tilled soils. Uh, another paper here with other partners, uh, different institutions following uh, winter school. And another paper uh, coming from a capacity building from a West African uh, PhD student who came as a visiting scientist and worked together, learned together the, with us. So sharing experiences between the different countries, different, between the different sites. So as I said, 90% uh, of the papers between France and South Africa co-sign, 49 quarters, 25 institutions. Strong emphasis on student supervision. Our own students, the ones who are director or vice director, but also emphasis on winter schools, lectures, and community training. Those students have been supervising or co-supervising. I'm talking about what I know or what I did here together with the partners. Uh, mainly coming from uh, uh, South Africa, uh, from different institutions, as you can see, and I've been supervised, co-supervised with different uh, partners here. This is an histogram of the country of origin. In black, the ones under supervision directly, and the other ones in gray, uh, from which we contributed. Most from South Africa, but some from uh, Swaziland, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, even Brazil, and uh, East Africa, Graham talked about a SSI project. I contributed to, to the training of some of those projects. Very few, fewer students from the north, but they were very important in our scheme. Uh, they were able to, to transfer a bit of the technology they knew, uh, have complementarity, synergies with the local students. So this was a very great uh, scheme experience for us to improve our capacity building. The main message I'd like to pass today on capacity building is that we really tried to follow each of the steps of the research process. Missing one, you miss the goals, you miss the scientific uh, outputs, you miss the capacity building. It's what I'm going to, do, to show you. So first of the steps, identification, of a problem the society is facing. Okay. So we go in the field, we see the problems. We turn those problems into research questions. We discuss. We get those research questions. What are the fluxes? What is happening? What is the impact of humans? We select limited objectives. 
We implement the methods. We raise funds. Graham talked about some of the funds, but we have been very fortunate to get funds from IRD, from WSC twice, from INSU, from Protera project, and others. And then we link people together. Those projects have been able to, to make us build uh, the team, operate. And then we went in the field. We did the work, field installation, trial implementation, data collection, observations, collection, measurements, measurements again. Fifteen thousand water and sediment samples, six thousand CO2 measurements, three thousand salt carbon and chemical analysis, data analysis, scientific meetings, thousand two hundred days at UKZN, for including my presence only, two hundred trips to Pochini with students, two thousand hours of group meetings for data analysis for uh, discussion, thousand hours for individual meetings. Training on scientific writing. One 10 weeks equals training per year on scientific writing. On putting on the paper all the steps of the scientific process. Dissemination to farmers, to school boys and girls, to women, until dark. <laughs> so how can I summary all of that? <coughs> Capacity building through research is key. It's key to train the scientists of tomorrow, the deciders of tomorrow. What are the lessons we learned from Pochini? How were our outputs possible? The 24 easy papers, those 24 students, huh? our team is called now the 24-24. Favorable human and technical context at UKZN. People willing to really share collaboration, share equipment, share knowledge, wanting to progress together with an open mind. It is field and laboratory context as well. A multidisciplinary research team associating students and seniors, thanks to founders, WSC, we, we believed in us. We believed in this cooperation. We believe in those research uh, fields in those research questions that were quite new, I can say, uh, in the country. Fostering synergies between team members, each one having a different responsibility, feeling part of a team. Process studies that have a direct link with social implications. The students felt that and they are going to talk to you about that aspect and the capacity building. I will never insist enough. All the steps of research we go through, uh, inconsciently sometimes, have to be taught to them. And during hours, day after day. And last, but not least, the negotiation for COP21. South Africa, unlike many developing countries, cannot afford to really decrease CO2 emissions due to human activities. It will curb the economic growth. It will uh, decrease the potential for growth creation. But there is one way, a potential way for those, country, those countries, is to rehabilitate soils, to store more carbon into the soils. This will help them mitigate against climate change, meet the COP21 objectives, but together with that, it will improve ecosystem functioning, food production, cre job creation, and many other benefits for the societies. Thank you very much.